welcome back to Historical Geology. Today I want to talk about some of the orogenic events that affected Laurentia throughout the Paleozoic and really the mobile belts that I talked about earlier. Remember when Rodinia rifted, not only did we open the Paleo-Pacific Ocean, but we also opened an ocean on the east coast or the south coast of Laurentia here. And that ocean is going to be the Iapetus Ocean. As Baltica rifted away, we get a mid-oceanic ridge developing and we widen this Iapetus Ocean. To get an orogenic event, we're going to change that divergent boundary to a convergent. And by middle Ordovician time, we do start seeing subduction. And whether that subduction was, was under Laurentia or maybe under an island arc, um, there's still some controversy, but it seems to be that there's an island arc that was accreted and uh, attached to Laurentia uh, during this taconic orogeny. Now, so again, the taconic orogeny would be the first event to affect East Laurentia. And so this is a little image showing the widening Iapetus Ocean. And then during this time, we're depositing that sock sequence. And for the taconic orogeny, we find that, that there are lavas, evidence of volcanic activity, volcanic ash, and maybe even some intrusive plutonic rocks. And they're all given radiometric ages of middle to late Ordovician. So that's the timing of this uh, taconic orogeny. The idea here is that we have a stable carbonate platform over Laurentia here. We see subduction under an island arc. And that island arc sometimes is called the Piedmont arc. Um, some people have subduction under Laurentia, but really the evidence is more of this accretion of, of an island arc and subduction under that island arc. Um, that's going to be added to, um, to North America. And then we get this taconic highlands that develops in here. Here is another idea is while we, we, sh we narrow the Iapetus Ocean, we're seeing either subduction under the island arc um, on, its, on its oceanward side or maybe subduction under from, from the passive margin of Laurentia over here. But nonetheless, there is a highlands that develops. And one of the key pieces of evidence we have for this, not only are volcanic rocks, but we also see this Queenston Delta Classic Wedge, which is, which is a thick pile of sediments that were eroded off of this Taconic Highlands. So this Queenston Delta Classic Wedge is the final piece of evidence for this Taconic Orogeny. And again, extensive accumulation of, of mostly detrital sediments, and they become thinner and finer as you go farther away. So in other words, as you go from east to west, they get thinner. And there's a couple of terms here I want you to know. One is called flish. So this word flish refers to uh, sort of dirty sediment, volcanic sediment, uh, deep marine mud. So in other words, deposition mostly in the subaqueous or underwater environment. So shales, volcanic classic deposits. And then the molass is now, this is uh, sort of sandstones and conglomerates, maybe red beds. And, the, and so these are indicating that there's deposition subairily or, or above sea level, right? So in other words, that flish initially fills the basin so much that it's now filled with sediment, it's above sea level, and we get the molass deposited on top of that. Now, um, for the Queensland Delta Classic Wedge, again, we're seeing very thick sediments, so most of this deeper stuff would be the flish right, that deeper water shales, and then we start seeing the subaerial, like stream deposits, fluvial deposits, which would be the molass. So uh, again, consists of thick coarse grain detrital sediments near the highlands, so thicker near these taconic highlands, and it thins as you go farther east. Other things that are occurring, and so here's a little cross section that kind of depicts what's going on with Laurentia here. So we have subduction under an island arc, the Piedmont arc, uh, or maybe subduction is going in this direction, but nonetheless, the collision of this arc or uh, North America or Laurentia creates a taconic orogeny. So here we've we've attached that Piedmont terrain to North America. We develop a passive margin again on the on the eastern side or that or the Iapetus Ocean side of that Piedmont terrain. We've attached those arcs to North America during that taconic orogeny. Also what's happening during this time is that there's a, a little microcontinent called Avalonia that, that separates itself away from Gondwana and is a microcontinent but attaches to Baltica uh, here over here in the middle Ordovician time. And by Lettuce Ordovician, it's gonna make its way toward North America. So in this case, later Ordovician, we have the taconic orogeny. We've, we've accreted these, um, this Piedmont arc here but we have, in fact, here, it, it, farther south near Florida and, and, and the Carolinas, 
we call the southern extension of this Avalonia, might have gone it the Carolina arc. Avalonia probably affected, you can see it's farther north over here in Nova Scotia and, and in Canada, but farther south down here, we would have this Carolina arc. And that's going to be accreted in, a, in the second orogenic event. And that orogenic event is called the Acadian orogeny, which is mostly Devonian in age. The key thing with the Acadian is that we're going to suture Baltica and Laurentia. We're going to make Laurasia or Euro America. So the Euro America, Laurasia, uh, it goes by, two, by both, both names. But in North America, we deposit a unit called the Catskill Clastic Wedge, which is, which is um, the Molas, whereas in Baltica, we deposit the Old Red Sandstone, which would be the Molas uh, that you find over in Scotland and in Europe. So anyways, Laurentia and Avalonia collide in the Northeast uh, and South Canada. We, we, we close that Iapetus Ocean. So again, the Acadian Orogeny is closing the Iapetus Ocean and we're suturing Baltica with Laurentia. Uh, farther south, uh, instead of Avalonia being in the middle there, we have those Carolina terrains uh, suturing with Laurentia, right? So here's a little depiction. So that would be our Acadian Orogeny here, where we sutured these uh, Carolina terrains or little southern fragments of Avalonia. There's still an ocean most, mostly in the south between Africa and now this continent here would become Laurasia, which is Europe and Laurentia together, right? Uh, or Euro America is another word we call for it. And then uh, the Old Red Sandstone Orogeny is another name for the Acadian Orogeny, but in this case it's for, for the Old Red Sandstone rocks we see in Scotland. In fact, this is that famous great angular conformity that James Hutton pondered and where he formulated his ideas about uniformitarianism back in the 1700s. So this is at Sikar Point in Scotland. The red beds, remember these are the molas, continental sediments. Remember the flish are the, the marine sediment that is deeper. And so one thing about this, these red beds in Scotland, the old red sandstone, they all the, the flow indicators indicate that, that the sediment was all shedding from some landmass that was to the west. Well, if you look at Scotland today, there's nothing to the west. There's the Atlantic Ocean to the west. During the Acadian Rajani, Laurentia was here. So these sediments are being uh, shed from Laurentia here. And so again, Euro-America, or the other word that we're using is Laurasia. That's a word that um, Wegener, Alpha Wegener used when he combined Laurasia with Gondwana to form Pangaea. So again, uh, Baltica and Laurentia, uh, Laurentia collide off of Greenland and Norway, right? So now we're forming a Euro-America or Laurasia. And we looked at uh, some trilobites earlier in the semester uh, when we were looking at these paradoxide trilobites. And we see that this uh, Carolina terrain, which is part of Avalonia, has those paradoxides. And these are unique to Gondwana. They're not North American or Laurentian, right? So that gives us an exotic terrain here in, um, in this Piedmont terrain. Then we talked about the Catskill Mountains. So that Catskill Wedge is the, the pile of sediment from this Acadian orogeny. And so just like the Queenston Wedge was for the Taconic orogeny, here I want you to know about the Catskill Wedge. And so again, the flish deposits are these black shales called the Hamilton Group down here. Uh, remember the, the Oriskany formation was for the Kaskaskian sequence, and then after that we're seeing now the deposition of these flish deposits, which are the Hamilton group here. And then we start filling that basin up, now we're starting to get above sea level, so we start seeing that molas, and that molas eventually deposits all these this old red sandstone, which is really over in Europe, but here in North America we're calling it the, the Catskill Wedge. Once again, the Catskill Wedge records a westward advancement of Avalonia. And so the Acadian Orogeny and the Catskill Mountains of New York, late Devonian. And so we form Laurasia or Euro-America. And so here is that suture, right? So up in here, we're seeing Scandinavia with Canada. Uh, we're probably accreting in here Avalonia here, right? So here's that old red sandstone in Scotland. And then the Catskill Wedge down here uh, in New York off of the Acadian Highlands over here. And then we have some black shales that we talked about earlier. And to also note that in the west, we're still seeing limestones forming out over here. Finally, the last orogeny to affect uh, eastern Laurentia, or, or the Appalachian regions, is this Alleghenian orogeny. And basically, in this case, we're going to suture Laurasia, which is Europe and, 
and Laurentia in North America with Gondwana to make Pangaea. So this is where we're making the supercontinent Pangaea. So we're closing the ocean that was that was between Africa and these Avalonia Carolina terrains here. And that happens in the late Permian. So maybe around 270, 260 million years ago. And we're making that large uh, supercontinent called Pangaea. Um, it's not mentioned here, but since we have one continent, there must have been one ocean, and that ocean is called Panthalassa. So the Panthalassa Ocean was an all-encompassing ocean, one ocean and then one supercontinent here in terms of Pangaea. When we look at the Appalachians, you can see there's this valley and ridge region, right, that shows uh, that collisional zone, that thrust faulting, and intense deformation in that Piedmont that documents that collision between really the Africa part of Gondwana and then the east coast here of North America. Here's a little summary diagram to kind of look at some of these events that occurred along eastern Laurentia. So remember about a billion years ago, 1.2 to 900 million years ago, we have those Grenville orogenies, right? Those Grenville orogenies are granulite facies and it documents the formation of Rodinia. So here's that supercontinent Rodinia forming. And then in New York, in that area, there's metamorphic rocks called the Fort, Fordham Nice. So that would be the basement units related to this Grenville orogeny. And then that Rodinian continent, continent will rift. So now we're going to rift it. We're going to open that Iapetus Ocean. So we open the Iapetus Ocean, and we're depositing the sock sequence right in here. Right. So here's our, our sock sequence. Eventually, that's going to met be metamorphosed to form the Manhattan Schist and the Inwood um, marble or carbonates there. Uh, so those are the sock sequences we see out in the New York area. You can see that Manhattan schist and those marbles in Central Park in New York. And then we're developing an island arc offshore here in that Iapetus Ocean. And that's probably that Piedmont terrain, the Piedmont arcs there. And we're going to collide those with the east coast of Laurentia uh, in the Appalachians, in that, in that Appalachian mobile belt, and that's our Taconic orogeny. But meanwhile, up in the northern Iapetus Ocean, we're seeing Avalonia make its way toward Laurentia. And remember, to the south, we have those Carolina arcs. And both Avalonia and the Carolina arcs have those paradoxite trilobites. And then as Avalonia moves its way, maybe subduction starts forming under Laurentia to give us our Acadian highlands. But at some point, Avalonia is going to crash into L Laurentia to make the Acadian orogeny in the Devonian. And then that's going to close Iapetus Ocean, Acadian orogeny. And the key thing that's going on here as well is we formed Laurasia, which is Europe and North America together, or the Northern Hemisphere continents. Now Laurasia, or Euro-America, is going to crash with Gondwana, or at least the Africa part of Gondwana, to make Pangaea. So now we make Pangaea in this Alleghenian orogeny. You'll see that in Europe they call it the Hercynian orogeny because they were getting um, maybe uh, different parts of Africa crashing up with Europe, but in North America we call it the Alleghenian orogeny. And then this is going to happen later on. We'll do this in the Mesozoic, but for now uh, the, the Permian end of the Paleozoic ends with this suturing of Gondwana with Laurasia to form Pangaea.